Hello everyone, welcome to TechX Media. I'm your host Rabab Zehra and today as a guest I have Matt Watts with me who is Chief Technology Evangelist at NetApp. As everyone today these days is talking about uh, sustainability, so today uh, we thought of having a conversation with Matt to know about what are the initiatives NetApp has taken uh, for sustainability and what are his thoughts on the topic. So let's say hi to Matt. Hi Matt, how are you? I'm absolutely fantastic. It's lovely to be joining you, Rebab. Yeah, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. So, uh, Matt, let's start with, um, I would like to ask that how important is sustainability to NetApp's overall strategy? Yeah, so I think it's it's been one of those interesting topics that we've been focused on it for the last probably two or three years. We've been releasing ESG reports over that sort of time frame, um, and it's been in increasingly important to us. And in this latest ESG report, we've made some very clear kind of statements of intent of, of where we want it to be. Um, so. I think going forward, um, it's very important to us, not just in how we operate as a company, um, but also in terms of the products that we sell, how do we make those products more efficient and more sustainable? Um, and how do we evolve our partnerships and some of the, the, the partnerships we have with companies like you know, Amazon, Microsoft, and Google to help our, our customers operate in a more sustainable way? So I think you'll see this as a thread that, that flows through quite a lot of different areas of our business. That's that's uh, correct. So, uh, Matt, uh, um, when we we have we are already in 2022. What are NetApp's biggest sustainability initiatives this year? Yeah, so I think the um, I think there's several things that we want to do, and it's kind of across the areas that we just discussed. Um, one of the things that we want to do is we look at the way we operate our company. Um, we want to improve our CDP score. That's that's an ambition for us. It's been improving. We think we can do more. Um, we're bringing on a new facility in Wichita that is going to be completely powered by solar energy. Um, we're going to increase our solar investments into Bangalore um, and also increase our um, investments into renewable energy. So that's the sort of how do we operate side of things. Um, from a, a product perspective, we want to get much more accurate in accounting for exactly how much emissions are being created by the products that we sell such that we can be much more proactive in how, how we help our customers operate technology in a more sustainable way. Um, and then lastly, it's how do we start to embed maybe emissions reporting into some of the technologies that we have, you know, some of our analytics platforms. Can we report not just on efficiencies and cost reductions, can we also start to report on emissions reductions to help people make you know, decisions that aren't just financially motivated, but could be financially and sustainably motivated. That's that's interesting. Uh, so uh, when we talk about data, there is a lot of data created every day. Uh, is it a threat now? What can we do to deal with it, uh, both on organizational and individual level? Yes. Yeah, so, um, so when we look at the quantities of data being created, it's quite staggering. Um, you know, at the current estimations, if we keep going at the rate that we are, we'll create in excess of a yottabyte of data by 2030. Um, for people who don't know what that is, that's a thousand zettabytes. That still doesn't mean anything. It's a trillion terabytes, which is equivalent to two or three trillion mobile phones. So, you know, vast, vast quantities. And um, the, the scary thing is, is that probably two thirds of this data is not used for anything after it's been created. But it's all sat on technology that is consuming power and is creating emissions. So, you know, when we look to a, a future where potentially even 10% of the energy we create is, is funding and powering data centers, data and the storage that sits behind it accounts for a significant portion. So we need to get better at not just creating efficient technologies to store it, we need to get better at analyzing it and working out what do we have, can we get value from it, or can we make better decisions about what we should do with it? Um, because it's unsustainable for us to keep just gathering this landfill of data at the rates that we're currently seeing. Yes, right. So um, before handling data, we should be careful about creating data as well. Um, so uh, Matt, you recently spoke about how to thrive sustainability in uh, Cloud Wave at IDC CIO Summit. Why does this topic matter to you so much? So the topic, I guess it's always been a topic I've been interested in. Um, the pandemic 
put more of a focus on it for me because I stopped traveling and I started thinking about how my life and how the world had become more sustainable because of a lack of international travel. Yeah. And so that was what sort of prompted me. Um, and then I started looking at how much of a uh, how much of a culprit is IT, or what role does IT play in this this kind of sustainability and the impact? Um, and like I say, it's so substantial we can't ignore it. The cloud providers, there's lots of reasons people look at cloud, you know, innovation to some degree, cost reduction. Um, I think what people have also now got to add to that is, does the cloud provider offer a more sustainable way of operating? Yeah. That's that's interesting. So uh, let's talk about the costs included in this. With this increased focus on sustainability, it will also affect the cost of technologies companies are deploying. So how can this issue be addressed? I, I think you know sustainability and efficiency sometimes do go hand in hand. So hopefully, if you can drive efficiency, you can drive down cost and be more sustainable at the same time. Um, but I think what we what we started to see with cloud. And if we can start to link sustainability and cloud a little bit more closely, people are realizing that the cloud is about creating value. And to, for the value that cloud gives you, there is typically a premium, but you pay that premium because the value that it creates for you is worth so much more. So I think if we can add in sustainability to it and say, you may go to the cloud, there may be a premium for doing it, but it's giving you innovation or business opportunities you didn't have before, and it's doing that in a more sustainable way, then I think it's, it's, it's finding the right balance of these different things. But just because you want to be more sustainable, you know, it can come with a cost, but I think if you link that to cloud and you link it to innovation, I think there's a, there's a happy medium you can play. Okay, uh, so uh, my last question is about, um, uh, as uh, you might have also read, that UAE is planning to reduce carbon emissions by 30% uh, by 2030 and achieve net zero emissions by 2050. How does NetApp uh, fit into this vision? Yeah, so it, it's, you know, it's not, it's not unique for UAE. I'm glad that they're doing it. Um, I think we're starting to see this crop up all over, all over the world at the moment. Um, so the first thing that we're going to do is establish a science-based target. Um, it's one thing saying we're going to be net neutral by a certain date, but if you don't have metrics and, um, and a proper action plan to back that up, it's, it's just kind of a number you're throwing out there. So what we're looking at doing is making sure we have a science-based target that will commit us to a documented and planned carbon reduction target over the next two, three, four, five years. Once we have that science-based target in place, then we will use that to establish exactly when we believe um, and when we feel it's right for us to claim that we want to be net neutral. Um, but people have to be careful that there's a lot of companies coming out saying we're net neutral or by, by this date, and it's only for certain types of emissions. And, you know, so at the moment, I think we need to stick with science-based targets and metrics that enable us to actually put a plan in place to get to net zero. Um, and then at that point, you know, declare what net zero is. So watch this space from us. We're working aggressively on it. And like I say, we want to be able to make sure that we can measure it, track it, and monitor it, and then make the announcements of, uh, of what we intend to do. Right. Thank you so much, Matt, for being here with uh, me today. And it was a pleasure talking to you. And um, we hope to have you again with TechX in the future. I would very much look forward to it, Ribab. Thank you for the questions. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk to you and to your, uh, to your listeners. Thank you everyone for watching. Stay tuned to TechX to know more about what is happening inside the technology industry. Goodbye.